I'm Stevie, and today I'm gonna talk about Ehlers Danlos syndrome, which is which is which is which is a condition that I have. What's the difference between disease, syndrome, condition, all of those words? It must mean the way in which you get it. Hmm. Like if you catch it. Catch it. We'll have to do some googling later. So I asked you over on Instagram to send in your questions about EDS. So be sure to follow me over there if you want your questions answered next time. So May is EDS Awareness Month, which might make you think that you aren't allowed to be aware of anything else this month, but it's just a myth. And we love to learn on this channel. Not to brag, but I'm also aware of lots of other things. I am aware of cats and joy and New Jersey, unfortunately. And for whenever you become involuntarily aware of New Jersey, BetterHelp has got you covered. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month. Remember how I said it's a myth that you can be aware of anything else? during EDS Awareness Month. It's really shocking because people with um, chronic health conditions always have perfect mental health. Do you ever go so deep into a pit of sarcasm that you don't think you'll ever find your way out? Slash S, am I right? Anyway, let's get to the questions. I'll tell you about BetterHelp a little bit more later on. So the first question, what exactly is EDS and how does it affect your daily life? So EDS is short for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and it is a connective tissue disease or it affects the collagen in your body. Collagen is found in the extracellular matrix, which sounds like another reboot of the matrix that will do even worse than the last one. Fortunately, EDS can be even more complicated, painful, and trying than that movie. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm going so hard on the matrix reboot. I didn't even see it. Neither did anyone else. There are so many types of EDS. Um, I have the type called hypermobility type or EDS type three or heads. And while it is not my favorite type of head to get, um, it is the most common type of EDS. And researchers are still looking for the gene mutation that causes it. So something that a lot of people talk about with EDS is your joints, even though, remember when I told you the extracellular matrix, collagen is everywhere that there are cells and tissue. But one of the common things that makes people go and get diagnosed with EDS is because their joints sublux and or dislocate. It's kind of like being one of the X-Men, except your superpower is that your joints don't stay in the right place. I'm mentioning a lot of nerdy things. I'm sorry, that's not a symptom of EDS. I don't know what to blame that on. Really, really trying to make this video funny instead of depressing. And before we get to the next question, let's talk about BetterHelp. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month. This year's theme is Together for Mental Health, and it's all about sharing personal stories in hopes of encouraging others to prioritize their mental health. Therapy has been so helpful for me, specifically when um, I was going through the diagnostic process of getting my diagnosis and trying to get my diagnosis and then coming to terms with it after diagnosis. Also, I love forcing people to listen to me talk for prolonged periods of time. You're here watching this video, so I win. Another big theme of Mental Health Month is um, advocating for access to mental health care. This has always been um, one of the big goals of BetterHelp. They offer customized therapy that includes video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't even have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to, because sometimes you want to do therapy in a shirt that you've been wearing for over a week and is now legally become a part of your body. And maybe that's something you should talk about in therapy. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional online therapy. You can apply for financial aid during the signup process and they accept HSA benefits. Because not only rich people have problems, there is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network. And that gives you access to help that might not be available in your area. Because what area has over 20,000 therapists, am I right? They have therapists that specialize in LGBTQIA plus topics and issues. Or I guess if you want a therapist that you can talk to about rich people problems, I'm sure they've got you there. My son Chauncey says his caviar doesn't have enough truffle, so I hunted him for sport. <laughs> I have no idea what you just said. Where are you supposed to be from? I don't know. I'm supposed to be from rich people land. Anyway, was that relatable to anyone? You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. It's so simple. Even simpler than hunting Chauncey for sport. And that was shockingly easy. After that, you can schedule secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages. Everything you share is confidential, so 
No one will ever find out that I hunt my son Chauncey for sport. Chauncey. You can also request a new therapist at no extra charge at any time. If you know anyone who is struggling with their mental health, um, be sure to recommend BetterHelp to them. You can use my link to get 10% off your first month. That's Better H E L P. Click the link in the description to celebrate Mental Health Awareness Month with BetterHelp and to um, show Chauncey that you mean business. So next question, can it be mild and unnoticeable at first? So two people in my life this week have told me that they got an EDS diagnosis after I like pointed out their symptoms to them. And since it's currently EDS Awareness Month, I really commend them on fully celebrating and really committing to it, you know what I mean? That's kind of like if you were celebrating Arbor Day and just like became a tree. So to answer the question, I think the answer to this question is yes and no. I think we as a society have a urge, this, this overwhelming urge to um, tell kids when they're experiencing a symptom that everything's gonna be fine, everything's okay. All of that is totally normal, which everything is normal, but like, is it though? Is it really? Some people might think it's normal if I dress this little guy up in a bow tie and a suit and trotted him around house to house in preparation for afternoon tea. Am I right, Troy? So for me, it took so long to figure out that the pain that I was experiencing wasn't the pain that other that everyone else in the world was experiencing, if that makes sense. Um, because everyone told me it was normal. Like, what does it actually feel like to not have your body be in pain all the time? What does it feel like to not be able to feel your digestion? And it's really interesting to me to like learn how other people like experience pain. Like, how does it hurt when you're hungry? My pain is always at a level to where it feels like a million tiny punches to all of my joints, which sounds adorable but it's not. So I guess I don't really notice when I'm getting punched in the stomach, not to brag. So to actually, too long didn't read, quick answer. If you listen to people around you um, when they say that nothing's wrong with you, then EDS can go unnoticeable for a long time. So the next question is how to get diagnosed. So since the specific gene mutation has not been specifically identified for heads, um, it's basically just a clinical diagnosis, which means you go to a geneticist or a rheumatologist or whatever, and they look at you and go, yep, it's EDS. I mean, it's a little more involved than that. There's like a few dis different sections. Um, I'll put a link in the description um, of the updated 2017 um, diagnostic criteria. So that's what I did before I asked to go to a geneticist and like basically rated myself to see if I could diagnose myself. And it's kind of like works on a point system. So you have to like Google what papules are, you know what I mean? If you have someone in your family that has it, then you, have a higher likelihood of getting diagnosed with it. And part of it is something called the Baton score, which is um, how many weird positions you can move your joints in. And it scores out of nine. The next question is, tell me about EDS's connection to POTS. So when I first got diagnosed with EDS, I got diagnosed with POTS at the same time, like at the same appointment. And I made a happy little video right after I got diagnosed and you can watch it here. Cause what's the only thing better than get, getting diagnosed with one chronic illness? That's right, two chronic illnesses. <laughs> So since collagen is all over your body and EDS causes a disruption in collagen production, um, the, the collagen in your blood vessels does not work correctly when you are changing position from sitting to standing or lying to sitting, et cetera. So when you stand up, the blood rushes away from your brain and can cause you to pass out. So your heart is like, whoa, we're not getting enough blood to the brain. So it starts pumping really fast to try to compensate for your blood vessels not constricting, which is basically like you're constantly doing cardio workouts when you're just sitting here. And when your body is constantly doing cardio, it is prioritizing that instead of of other things in your body like digestion, etc., which can cause issues in the long run. Next question, what is your simplified explanation of EDS when people ask? The thing that I always tell people when they ask me quick, like a quick explanation of what it is or people that just aren't understanding when I go on and on about like the collagen matrix or whatever. When I go from laying down to standing up, I shrink two inches because all my joints collapse in on themselves. That's like a quick, explanation for them. Obviously that doesn't actually happen every single time, but my height does fluctuate depending on my time of the month, I don't know. That kind of gets the point across to people to at least understand the pain that um, EDS can cause. If I'm standing when I tell someone this, they let usually usher a chair over and they're like, oh sit. How does it affect your everyday life in ways people may not realize? This is a great question. I wish I had, a, like I could make a whole video about this specifically, but I would say the accessibility of everywhere I go is kind of an unexpected thing to people who don't have EDS. Having to like place bets on every single choice 
choice that I make. So like I have to place a bet because I don't know the potential consequences of that bet. Hey, do you want to go to this coffee shop and then also um, go to a meeting after that? And then I'm like, okay, how many steps are there in the coffee shop? Am I gonna be like mentally able to do that meeting after I go to that coffee shop? So it's literally like gambling. Like, yes, technically I can take those stairs, but can I afford to make that bet? What do I have to do for the next week? When is it most important to save that like energy money? You know. Also, there's so many other ways that it like randomly affects everyday life. Like EDSers need more local anesthesia and also it wears off faster which is why I chug Novocaine at the dentist. So the next question is what works for joint pain? I have yet to find anything that works for my EDS pain. So I'm always pretty wary to recommend treatments because I am not a doctor and what works for me may not work for you. And so many of us chronically ill peeps are desperate for a pill that will make their lives easier, which I can totally relate to. But I'll tell you a few of the pills that have helped me tremendously. So the first thing that ever helped me, which I'm not sure if this is directly tied to my EDS or not, um, but I think that I have um, malabsorption of fat soluble vitamins. So who knows if that is connected to EDS or not. The first thing that ever helped was vitamin D. I took so much vitamin D because my vitamin D was so low. And because I have a hard time absorbing it, I take way over the recommended amount. So please consult your doctor about this. The next thing is methylated vitamin B complex. And low vitamin B is directly tied to my bone pain, not necessarily my joint pain, but like the long bones in between my joints. Once I started having a regular dose of vitamin B and was on it for a while, my bone pain disappeared. And then one time I like did, I was I ran out or forgot to take it or something for a few weeks and it came back and I was like, oh my God, I forgot how much pain I was in before this. So I immediately started taking it again, obviously. So yeah, I take vitamin B, no idea if that's connected. Magnesium. So magnesium helps me poop, but also it's regarded by so many professionals as like the most important thing for EDSers to take. Hundreds of processes in your body need magnesium to work. So I take oral magnesium and I also do magnesium baths um, with like mag magnesium salt, but not that often because it's really expensive because you have to use so much salt in the bath for it to like make a difference and they're very expensive. But you can make a magnesium salt spray um, with distilled water and that helps it last a little bit longer because you just spray it directly on your skin instead of in a giant thing of water that you then soak in. Do you know what I mean? So those are all really great. But I did start taking a new one because I was reading that MSM is recommended for people with EDS and this new one has MSM in it, which is not the same thing as an MLM apparently. Yeah. And no, I'm not. I'm not recommending essential oils, don't worry. So MSM has been shown to help in some studies um, with osteoarthritis, um, which is something that EDSers are really prone to arthritis. But the one that I'm taking has a bunch of other stuff in it. And I think the, the dosage of MSM in it is only like hundred milligrams, but I kind of just wanted to try this and see if I could notice any difference. And I think I'm noticing a slight difference, but I want to try um, taking like a lot more, like 1500 milligrams, I think. Um, of MSM, but I need to find like a reputable seller. I'm pretty sure I can notice a slight change in my joint pain, but also this, this complex that I have has a bunch of other stuff in it, like turmeric and other stuff that's good for your bones. It's like a bone complex. And the next thing that I have not tried, but I've heard a lot about, and I've been doing a lot of research about, but it's very difficult to get and it's not super approved by every health service. <laughs> it is called LDN. I'll post a link below to like learning about LDN and all of the things that it helps with and how it works and all of that stuff. Um, and there's a lot of studies about it going on. But yeah, it's low dose naltrexone. So I think that'll be the next thing that I try before pain meds because I've been trying to put off pain meds as long as I possibly can. So the last question is why zebras? So if you don't know, EDSers, we call ourselves zebras and a herd of zebras is called a dazzle. So when someone gets diagnosed, um, we say welcome to the dazzle. And the reason that we're called zebras is because in medical school, doctors have a saying, if you hear hoof beats, think horses, not zebras. Meaning if a patient is presenting with a symptom, you should think of the most common disease or thing that could be causing that symptom instead of the most rare thing. So when you hear hoof beats, you don't automatically think there's a herd of zebras outside. You're like, oh, it could be horses because those are more common. I don't know. Anyway, but sometimes it is a fucking zebra. So we call ourselves zebras because um, EDS is considered an extremely rare 
thing. A lot of us have experienced medical gaslighting. And for a genetic disease that you are born with, the average age that people get di diagnosed with EDS is extremely late in life. Yay zebras, am I right? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I gotta go because I gotta dress this guy up all fancy and take him around for afternoon tea, right? Are we gonna go hunt Chauncey for sport together? Darling. Thank you so much for watching. Leave any questions, any additional questions that you have about EDS in the comments. And if you would like to join my wonderful Patreon family, click the link in the description because we'd love to have you and my lovely patrons make videos like this possible. See you guys later, bye. You have the stinkiest breath, Troy. Did you know that?